project, we're going to start with two images from pexels.com. And what you may have guessed, we're going to put the football image inside the TV of the TV remote image. And to make the composite look realistic, we also need to reflect the football image in the glass table in the foreground. To create this composite, we're going to use several selection tools. We'll use the object selection tool, the lasso, the polygonal, and the rectangular marquee tool. We're also going to do a Gaussian blur, so we blur this photo. You can see that the soccer image on the screen is blurred. We want to blur our football photo, and we'll do some other adjustments to this image as well. And the result will be this image in what we call a composite. And a composite is simply taking multiple images and putting them together into a new image. So download the two images, and let's open them up in Photoshop. Here in Photoshop, I have both images open. There's two tabs at the top. So we have our changing channel image, or our TV remote, and then the football image. So I'm going to focus on the, the changing channels, the TV remote image. And as always, I'm going to duplicate my background layer. We have background copy. I'm just going to call this um, television. We have some items in the foreground that we'll need to put above our football image when we bring it in. That's, that's going to be the, the hand in the remote and the bottle of beer. We want to reflect this into the table here. So we're also going to need to worry about this cup of chips. So we're going to isolate all those on their individual layers. And we'll talk more about layers in the next unit, but we can't really do this selected composite without working with layers. So you get a little preview of working with layers here. I want to start by making a selection of the hand and the remote and isolating that to its own layer. Now we've seen there's lots of different selection tools and the best selection tool really depends on what your image is. And you may have to experiment with different tools. And we can use these in combination with one another as well. I'm going to select the object selection tool. It's a fairly new tool in Photoshop. It uses the artificial intelligence abilities that are now built into Photoshop to select an area based on what it thinks is what we want. So with that select on the option bar, we have a choice here of the mode and there's a rectangle and there's lasso. I'm going to choose lasso and we're going to come in here and just begin to lasso around the hand and the remote. Come back and select my selection on the right hand side and we'll see how it does. That did a pretty good job of getting the fingers and the remote, but didn't get the wrist and the palm of the hand. So now I'm going to select the add to selection option on the option bar. And I come over here, notice it's actually highlighting this as an area that I might want to select. I'm just going to click on it and it adds that to my selection. I don't even need to lasso it in this case. So now I've got the fingers, the remote, and the, the wrist and palm and arm all selected together. I'm missing a little bit of the remote up here. So again, I'm going to take that lasso tool with the add to selection. And let's just see if we can select that little bit there. See if we can add that in. Okay, didn't get it. So what I'm going to do now is take the actual lasso tool and again, I'm going to add to my selection and I'm going to zoom in here so I can really see closely what's happening. And we'll take the lasso tool. I'm just going to come in here and just get this area. So I've added that to the selection. There's still a little spot up here on the top. So I can actually come in and just dip down in and let go and it'll draw the line across. And let's do another little line across here. So it's going to be a fairly straight edge. That's actually pretty good. We're going to contrast this a little bit and blur the edges. You can see it missed a little bit of the remote here on the edge. That's okay. I'm going to zoom back out. Now I'm going to go to the layer menu and choose 
new layer via copy. And what I end up with is just the hand on the remote on its own layer. In fact, let's name this layer hand remote. Now I want to do the same thing with the chips and the bottle. So I'm going to go back to my, my television layer. And let's try the object selection again. I actually did a really good job. Um, if it didn't, if it didn't get all everything that you wanted, then again, you can use the lasso tool to select areas that you want to add or subtract from, but that's pretty good for my purposes. I'm again, going to go to the layer menu, choose new layer via copy. And we'll just call this chips. And then I'm going to get this bottle of beer. So let's try the same thing. Object selection tool. Oops. Now make sure I'm using the new selection in the option bar with my object selection tool. Notice I can just click on here or highlight the bottle and it selects that. I can just click on it and it gets the bottle. This is all fairly new in Photoshop within the last two years. And really they've improved this in the last six months with the most recent version, I think. So once again, I'm going to go to the layer menu, new layer via copy. Give this layer a name of bottle. Okay, so there's my three isolated layers. I'm going to go back to the television layer. I'm going to go to the move tool. Just so I'm not accidentally selecting anything else, I'm going to drag a ruler guide down to just the top of the television picture, one at the bottom. I'm going to come in from the left hand ruler and drag a ruler guide on the left hand edge of our picture and then another one on the right hand edge. I'm going to go to the view menu and choose snap to guides. And so here I am going to just drag a rectangular selection tool to those guides. And what I'm interested in in the info panel is the size of my selection. Mine is 667 by 370. Now, I usually have a piece of uh, pad of paper by my computer. And so I don't forget those numbers. I'm going to write those down 667 and 370. That's the size of the picture that we want in our television. I'm going to go to the football image. And let's look at the image size here. It's 640 by 427. I want to make it the width, the height, we're going to, have to crop out a little bit. But let's change this width. I'm going to just do um, 680, making it a little bit larger. So I get 680 by 454. Now, generally, we don't want to make our images larger. That's going to rasterize the image and make it a little more blurry. But in this case, the image itself in our composite is going to be blurred. So making it a little bit larger isn't going to impact the quality at all. Now with the Taylor Marquee tool, I'm going to change my style here to fix size. And I'm going to type in those numbers of 667 and 370. And then I can click and I get the marching ants of my Taylor Marquee. I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to nudge this however I want it. I'm going to say that's probably about the image that I want. And I'm going to go to the edit menu, choose copy, go back to our TV image. And here I'm going to go to the edit menu and choose paste. And it pastes that on a new layer. In this case, I still have my selection, so paste it into the selection. And I'm going to name this football. So there's our, our image without the football and with the football.
By the way, if the image didn't paste into the selection, you didn't have the selection anymore, you can move it and um, you need to, you can scale it if the size isn't correct. To match the depth of field of original photo, I want to blur the image on the TV screen. And to do that, I'm going to go to the filter menu. One of my favorite filters is in the blur filters. I'm going to choose Gaussian blur. And with Gaussian blur, we can have some control over how much do we want to blur this. And we see the image here as we play around with the slider at the bottom as to how much we want to blur it. And I think 3.6 is probably a pretty good setting there. I'll click OK. I'm going to go to the View menu, Extras, and turn that off. I'll get rid of our guides. They're still there. We're just hiding them now. We can see the image a little bit better. That actually looks fairly good to me. It's not perfect, but for our purposes, this gets us into thinking in terms of making selections and making composites. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to take this image and I want to blur it down here in the table. To create that reflection, I'm going to take the football layer and drag it to the plus sign, create a duplicate of that layer. Let's name this reflection. I'm going to take the move tool and I'm going to move it down basically to our table. I'm going to take that, that selection, I'm going to control click on the thumbnail to make the selection now of that football image. And in the reflection, it should be reversed. I'm going to go to the edit menu transform. We're going to flip this vertically. I'm going to deselect control D and I want to blur this a lot more for the reflection. So we'll go back to the filter menu, blur, Gaussian blur. And in the window here, I, I get the little hand mover. I can move this down so I can see the image and we're going to blur this a whole lot more. I'm going to go to about um, I think somewhere between 15 and 20. So let's do 16.6. I'm going to go a bit more. And again, you can type into here. Actually, I think 20.8 looks really good to me. I'm going to say OK. Now, it's only going to reflect in the glass tabletop and not in the TV stand here. I'm going to come to the edge of the TV stand. I'm going to select that and delete it. And I got a little bit of a gap here. I'm going to take the TV reflection and just see if I can move it up a little bit using the up arrow key. That looks pretty good to me. Now, in a typical photograph, the foreground and background, there's going to be a slight blurring of the edges of our foreground objects and the background objects that when we make selections, we sometimes lose that, that blur. And it kind of can be a giveaway that this is a composite. So I'm going to take the hand remote layer. And here's my trick for blurring the edge of this object in the, in the selected layer. I'm going to control click on the layer. I'm going to go to the select menu, go modify, and I'm going to contract or bring those marching ants in. I'm going to do a two pixel contraction. You see those ants come in just a little bit around the edge. Then I'm going to do the inverse. I'm going to select everything outside of this. So select inverse. So now this whole area is selected and not the hand of the remote. And here I'm going to apply again just a little bit of a Gaussian blur. We're going to bring this way down. I want it less than that two pixel, I want it less than that two pixel contraction that I did. So I'm going to go about, I don't know, 1.4, 1.5, somewhere in there. And again, we can do a control D to deselect the ants. And now that softens the edge of our remote and hand a little bit and helps sell this composite. I want to do the same thing for the chips. 
You can see there's a very hard edge right here. I'm going to control click on the layer to select that image. We'll go select, modify, contract. So again, I'm going to contract it by two. Select the inverse. And I can just choose Gaussian Blur up at the top. It'll apply the exact same settings. So that's going to blur the edge. Again, let's do a Control D. So that looks much better. And we do the same thing with the bottle. Let's go to the bottle. Control click on the thumbnail. We'll contract by two pixels. Select the inverse and apply our Gaussian blur. And there is our composite having changed out the TV screen from a soccer game or European football to an American football game. Provide a reflection of the television and kept all of our foreground objects in place by replicating them on top layers. If you'd like to see more videos in the Photoshop Practicum playlist, click the title at the bottom. If you'd like to be alerted to new videos, please click my photo in the top right to subscribe to the channel.